Hello, and welcome to the HDI Propagation Series. My name is Harley Smith, and today I'd like to introduce you to one of my favorite growing mediums for hydroponics, rock wool. Rock wool is actually made from rock. Basaltic rock and limestone are crushed, melted at 3,000 degrees, then blown into spinning cylinders, just like making cotton candy. Have you ever seen cotton candy made at the fair? Well, rock wool is made the same way. So this piece of rock wool here is 97% airspace and just 3% rock. That provides the perfect balance between air and water holding capacity. Rock wool comes in all shapes and sizes. Starter cubes come in sheets of 98 or in sheets of 50. Sheets of 98 are best for starting seeds and sheets of 50 are a little larger and better for cuttings. Either one fits perfectly into a standard nursery tray. Larger blocks are used for growing bigger plants, all the way up to the 8-inch Hugo blocks. And Rockwell slabs are used for growing long-term crops, such as tomatoes, peppers, and long-stem roses. One three-foot slab of Rockwell can grow four full-grown tomato plants with 50-foot vines, and they'll never become root-bound. But one of the best applications for rock wool is for starting clones and seedlings. It's clean, it doesn't lock up any nutrients, and it has the perfect air to water ratio for fast rooting. The only downside to rock wool is that it needs to be conditioned before using it. Rock wool contains a little limestone dust from manufacturing that makes it a little too alkaline right out of the package, about 8.0. So the pH needs to be neutralized before using it the first time. Rockwell conditioning solution makes treating Rockwell easy. It contains phosphoric acid to neutralize the pH, trace minerals to feed the plant, and B vitamins to encourage strong root growth. So Rockwell conditioning solution will give your plants a strong head start. To condition Rockwell starter cubes, simply add three ounces per gallon to about two gallons of water. So here I have six ounces pour it into my water, and that should do it. But for best results, lower the pH of the solution to about 5.5. So we'll use a little pH lower to do that. Add it in here, just enough to lower the pH to 5.5. I'll check it with my pH meter to make sure it's just right. Good, that's perfect. Now all I need to do is take my solution Pour it over the rock wool until it's completely submerged. Personally, I like to soak the rock wool overnight to thoroughly saturate the rock wool. That way it gives it time to neutralize all of the lime and warm up to room temperature before I plant the seeds. But if you're in a hurry, it only needs to soak for a minute or two. After the rock wool is fully saturated, pour off the excess solution so that it's not sitting in a pool of water. Remember, it isn't overwatering that kills a plant, it's lack of oxygen. If the rock wool is sitting in a puddle, the air spaces could fill up and possibly drown the roots. But if the rock wool is well drained, it has the perfect air to water ratio. Now I'll dispose of the excess water and we're ready to plant seeds. Rock wool starter cubes come with pre-drilled holes, but it's a good idea to use a pen or chopsticks to open them up a little before you put the seeds especially the ones that seem like they might be plugged up a little bit. Then drop one or two seeds into each hole. It's a little tricky at first, but with a little practice, you'll get the hang of it. When you're finished, just cover the propagation tray with a humidity dome, and that will keep the humidity under the dome at about 98%, perfect for germinating seeds and just slide the tray into a propagation station under fluorescent lights and wait for the seeds to germinate. A heat mat is also helpful, especially for tropical seeds, such as tomatoes and peppers. The rock wool should stay moist for at least a week, but if it starts to dry out, just mist the rock wool slightly or bottom water it to moisten it up. In a matter of days, the seeds will germinate, and in another week or two, you'll have rooted seedlings ready for planting. That's all for now. 
For more information on propagation, please contact us at Hydrodynamics or watch the other videos in this series. Until next time, good luck and good growing.